Let's go to live now to Geneva. Sarah Morris is following the story for us there. Sarah, uh, the UN envoy there being clear, he's not expecting a breakthrough, but he wants to keep up momentum. And he mentioned uh, three or four important key objectives of these talks. Take us through them. That's right, Matt. A real softening of expectations here from Stefan Di Mistura. He himself admits that a breakthrough, a major one, is not likely here at these talks. But what could happen is it could pave the way uh, for some sort of roadmap <coughs> towards peace. It would take a lot more discussion, many more rounds of talks. But he does believe now is the right time to try and get that momentum on the back of the ceasefire, although shaky in place. And he believes really now is the time to go ahead with these talks. What what is going to be talked about? Well, he has a number of issues he wants to push. Many of them he's tried to push in previous talks before, and they all really have to do with the political process in Syria. First and foremost, he wants to talk about forming a sectarian government. Secondly, he wants to push for free and fair elections that are monitored by the UN. And thirdly, he wants to talk about writing a new constitution for Syria. But he was at pains to point out that no other country would be writing this constitution. It would be the Syrians themselves themselves deciding how their new constitution should look. But as I said, this has been the agenda at many previous meetings that we've had here in Geneva and in other cities around the world, and they have not ended well. Uh, so the task here really is to seize the momentum with the fighting uh, slowing down on the ground, although it has been picking up lately. But generally, with this ceasefire hold, uh, holding, perhaps get the, the parties together and see if they can make some progress here. Sarah, in the past hour or so, Stefan de Mistura said that he's been waiting for all of the representatives, representatives to arrive in Geneva. Some have already, others will, uh, according to visa issues and a few other logistics. Mm -hmm. Just tell us who's likely to come from both sides and mm -hmm. are they likely to meet face to face or will de Mistura have to resort to the shuttle diplomacy of, of last year? Well, Stefan Di Mistura has not been able to confirm that the two parties, the Syrian opposition and the uh, Syrian regime, will actually meet face to face. Now, we know that just about everyone uh, Stefan Di Mistura hoped would come to these talks has already arrived here in Syria. Uh, many are in their hotels. Uh, we are expecting, of course, representatives from both uh, the Syrian regime and also the Syrian opposition. On top of that, we understand there'll be delegations from Turkey and Russia, and they'll play a sideline role here. Here. They, of course, won't be uh, directly involved in face-to-face -face talks between the Syrians, but they will be in place to help perhaps with the framework and some of the more technical details that need to be ironed out here. We do know that tomorrow morning Stefan Di Mistura himself will go off to the hotels uh, where all the delegations are and he will start trying to iron out some of the issues. He will be inviting them to come together at the table here at the UN, but whether or not they will is completely a different question. We know from uh, talks that have been held in the the past that they've never actually got to the point where they've met face to face. There's been a lot of posturing in hotel rooms, there's been a lot of demands being laid out in hotel rooms, but never uh, or not often have the two sides come together. So that of course is Stefan Di Mistura's biggest challenge here. Okay, Sarah Morris in Geneva, thank you.